everybody, what's going on? It's Miss Dehino with Miss Dehino's Math. And today we're going to take a look at the area of complex figures. And what makes it so complex is they leave out some information in the figure where we have to figure that out before we can figure out the area. So today I'm going to be giving you two really fun and cool techniques on being able to figure out the area of complex figures. So let's go to it. Okay, everybody, so let's take a look at this complex figure and figure out the area of it. So again, what makes this complex is they want us to figure out the area of this complex figure. But if you notice, this side is missing right here. So we have to figure out this missing side before we can figure that out. So let me go ahead and show you probably the easiest way to figure this out. And there's actually a couple of ways to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do it uh, vertically. What you want to do is just split this shape up into do two different shapes. So what I'm going to do here is just draw a line straight down like that. So what I've done is I've just now created two different rectangles here, and I'm going to have to figure out the, you know, this missing side still to be able to figure out the area but it's going to be super easy. So watch this. If I come over here, I still know that this side is six yards and this side is five yards. So I do have my base and height to get the area. So this is going to be 30. And what I need to now know is, okay, what is this side going to be here? So what I'm doing is I'm taking a look at this whole side here and I'm going to draw Maybe, maybe you can see this better if I draw this arrow. So this whole side right here is nine yards. And I come up here and go, okay, if this is five yards, then this must be the remaining difference. So nine minus five is four. So now I can figure out, okay, so if that's four and this is three, this shape must have now the area of 30 plus 12. This whole thing has an area of 42. Now, Mr. Hino, can you do this the other way? Sure, I can make this, I can make this line actually go across. Just make sure you remember 42, okay? So let me go ahead and get rid of all this. And let me just show it to you the other way now. So instead of making that line uh, vertical, now I'll make it horizontal. And I'll show you that we're still going to get 42, okay? All right, so now I can take a look at this whole big rectangle here, and it is 9 by 3. So 9 times 3 is 27. And I'm going to do the same thing I did with the other shape, but now it's going to be going vertically here. So watch this. I know that this whole side is six, and I know that this part is three. So this must be right here. This must be the difference of six minus three. So six minus three is three. So now I can take that five, I can take this three. Five times three is 15, and you guessed it, 15 plus 27 is 42. So we got 42 both ways. And this technique is just called, you know, splitting the shape into two different rectangles here. So if this is a little bit complicated, let me show you now, and you're going to need to be able to get a piece of paper and hopefully some graph paper. Let me show you how you can do this on a piece of graph paper. Okay, so if you're lucky enough to have a piece of graph paper, go grab it. And I'll show you how you can do this now um, on this piece of graph paper here. So what I can do is, let me come over here. So if you remember from that previous shape, it was six yards tall. So one, two, three, four, five, six. It was five yards tall here. It was nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
Let me move this over here so you can see it better. Three yards high. And here was the mystery part here. So if it's three high, it's going to come straight across here. And this is the beauty about the graph paper is I'm able to now just be able to count boxes. So it's six by five. Down here is nine. This is three. And what's really nice about the graph paper is I automatically now know what the mystery sides are because I can just count. So if you just count one, two, three, four, this is going to be four. And right here, this is going to be one, two, three. So that's going to be three. So no matter how I cut the shape in half, so if I cut it in half like this, so now I just automatically know the mystery sides. So nine times three is 27. And now I know that this is five times three. And there's my 15. So the graph paper really helps because I'm able to just count boxes now. Whereas before, it would just be this, you know, unknown space and I wouldn't be able to know. But with the graph paper, now I can just count. And I know what you're saying. What if the numbers get big, Mr. Hino? Then you can always, you know, just make this two, you know, two, four, six, eight. Um, you would just have to remember to tell yourself that and not count it as ones. So, you know, you can modify your graph paper if the numbers get too big, just make the boxes um, be more than just one box wide. So this is a really good way of knowing the, you know, area of complex figures because there's no guesswork now. Now you can just count and see what the mystery sides are. So hopefully that was helpful today, guys. For those of you that are trying to figure this out, I know it can be very frustrating and confusing and it's it's all about optics and just being able to see what these mystery sides are so if the graph paper definitely helps i would go with that